Are you looking for the perfect heavy duty bike rack that has a fair price? I think I have a good rack for you. Today I'm going to look at the Thule T2 Classic bike rack. This was the only rack I could find due to availability shortages, but it worked out great. So that's my bike's wheelbase, 1266, size extra large Levo. This bike is not easy to find a rack for because it's super long. So whenever you're buying a rack, it's super important to consult the manufacturer's website, as I did here. And it turns out that the max wheelbase is less than my bike, but it fits and the weight capacity is in spec. So touching on weight capacity, this Yakima Swing Daddy rack only has a 30 pound per tray weight limit. The spike's 54 pounds. I was really lucky not to yard sale this thing down the freeway. It was also damaging the dropper post by like yanking it up over bumps. So very important to check the specs. So specs are one thing and fitment is another. First, I would go off of the weight and make sure that it's built to withstand the weight of your bike, but fitment is very important. This is a brand new 2020 Yakima on-ramp, e-bike Pacific bike rack. My bike did not fit on this thing worth a damn. So very important too is to try the bike on the rack before you buy it. Luckily, Yakima and the local shop were super cool and took it back and gave me a refund. I did a whole review on this rack. It was kind of negative, but I was just very disappointed. So this rack did not fit my bike, even though it was featured in the advertisement. Go to Yakima on ramp and look at the review or the pictures and we'll show an extra large Levo. This bike does not fit on that rack. Yakima is a good company. They offered to take it back. They're coming out with better products, but the Thule T2 Classic has it going on. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So probably my favorite part about this rack besides the price is it's very easy to take bikes off and it's very easy to put bikes on. I tried the one up rack, which is definitely a better quality build but it was pretty difficult to get the bike on by myself. I've been carrying around two 50 pound e-bikes on the regular, bouncing up and down gravel roads. And that's definitely redlining the rack, but I'm pretty confident with it. I feel like it's not gonna fall off and everything's holding up good. Installing the bike rack on the car is pretty easy. It does take some strength to lift it up and position it correctly, but nothing abnormal. A bolt screws through the bike rack and the tow bar and creates a tight seal so it doesn't rattle too much. I've found that that bolt becomes loose quite frequently, but it's better than not having a bolt, so that's what you got. So there's two downsides I found with this rack. It sits super far low, so when you're going up steep grades, the end of the rack, the very end right there, scrapes. The trade-off is it makes it easy to load the bikes because they're low to the ground. The one-up rack or possibly some other racks, they're higher off the ground and they won't scrape, but it makes it harder to load because you have to lift it higher. The second drawback of this rack is the arm that holds the front tire it chews the fork up pretty good, like it rubs the graphics off and there's a lot of plastic on this bike rack, so it might not last 10 years. The one up rack is all aluminum. That one's for sure going to last longer than these plastic pieced Thule one. Strong points of this rack are it is super simple. It has a super long track record. It fits 60 pounds per tray e-bikes. It fits 1,288 millimeter wheelbase. It's super easy to unload and load. I think that's its strongest point. I would definitely buy this again. 
and there's plenty of spare parts out there if it does break the plastic parts. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully this helped you.